There really is something special about new board games getting released all the time. When I think of board gaming, I think of my collection and that's pretty much one third of my enjoyment of this hobby. I think the other two thirds are honestly anticipating and wanting the latest release. Checking out new designers, old designers, re-themes, just the latest hotness, just airing about it just grows that anticipation. That's what this video is about. I'm gonna be talking about my most anticipated board games, both family, beginner and intermediate board games that I'm excited that are coming out in 2024. And welcome to Thoroughfield. You are a farmer and you're gonna have your wheelbarrow and that's gonna be your worker placement that you're gonna be going around on your own block of land. In this game, you're gonna be drawing sunrise cards every round, you're gonna be earning your income then it's time to get down and get dirty because you've got to go start planting some seeds, tending that land and growing that harvest so you can sell it for the most income. The mayor of the town's going to be going around trying to inspire you to grow the best crops. So why do I care? The game is quick. 12 total actions. Plus also a solo with 18 levels of difficulty. Now this is a game that I can get behind. Biodiversity in the ocean? and we have Aqua. Now my partner, she's my best friend, but she's also my nemesis when it comes to gaming. Anything puzzly and abstract? Well, she's just gonna beat me every time and that's why I'm interested in Aqua. It's gonna be a puzzly abstract game where we're gonna have hex tiles with different colors on them. And we're trying to match those colors to create their own set color hex. From there, we get to put a marine animal on top from there, we're going to keep growing those and eventually we're going to put bigger marine animals on top. It reminds me so much like Acropolis and it's these sort of games that really get some playtime in my household. Now, also, the theme is beautiful. I love marine diversity. It's just so charming and it looks beautiful on the table. Aqua is just going to be one of those abstract games that I think is going to be a hit in 2024. I mentioned earlier that Keymaster Games is really held in such high esteem. Well, another publisher is Flat Out Games. I've got four of their games, Calico, Cascadia, Verdant, and Fit to Print, and all four of them I love. So the next game that's coming out of that publishing powerhouse is gonna be Nocturne. In Nocturne, you are a mystic fox casting spells and enchanting these items. Well, it's these items that you're gonna be fighting over on a five by four grid. Now these tokens, they're all gonna have different ways of scoring and it's at its heart a set collection game. On your turn, you're gonna be bidding for these tokens, but the key is you have to bid adjacent to the previous bid, so left and right, up and down. Look, it just looks like a beautiful looking game on the table. You'll be fighting over set goals, there's gonna be three gold cards every round and you'll be just playing it over two rounds. It's gonna be simple fun, but enough to get my puzzly efficient mind just going in overload. Add in some Beth Sobel artwork and I think we have another hit here. Kelp, shark versus octopus. And this is gonna be a two player dueling game set in the South African kelp forest. You'll be playing as one of the two asymmetric creatures. You're gonna be either playing as the octopus and using your camouflage going around the edge of the board and trying to hide, or you're gonna be the shark going through the center of the board, going fast and trying to find that octopus. Designer Carl Robinson has dug deep in this game to try and get the thematic elements of each animal right. In this game, you're gonna have deck building, dice bag building, you're gonna have bluffing, hidden movement. There is so much to love about kelp. Now, one thing that I don't understand why, but Kelp has a lot of counterfeit copies out there in the world at the moment. So make sure you wait, support the designer, support the publisher, and get the proper copy of Kelp. It's gonna be worth the wait. Did you ever play Maracaibo? Set in the Caribbean, sailing around different islands, getting crew members, and exploring for treasure? Well, it doesn't matter if you have or not, because we now have the standalone sequel Pirates of Maracaibo. And Alexander Fist has been joined by Ralph Burnett and Ryan Hendrickson in just exploring the Caribbean again, but in a streamlined way. 
Now the board that we used to have is now replaced by cards and the cards will be placed out and that will be now our Caribbean. We're gonna be moving one to three spaces and we're gonna be using those cards for one-off abilities, ongoing abilities. We'll still be doing the same thing, getting crew members, we'll be building up our ship and just exploring the Caribbean and amassing lots of treasures. In fact, pretty much sounds like a dice tower cruise, but look, it's not and this is, <laughs> just a more, I guess, easy going version, but it's still gonna be about a medium weight game. So when I talk about a family version of this game, well, make sure it's more like teenagers and yeah, probably a little bit of an older audience because it still is gonna be a difficult game. Now this game will shave about one third of the time off the original Maracaibo, so I really love that as a concept. And so far the reviews have been really positive and it's just something that I'm really intrigued by. Now, what the designers also done, they've got a uh, fog of war version and they've also got a pirate like attack version where you can attack other pirates. So these modules, you can make the game whatever's gonna suit you and your family the best. So that's Pirates of Maracaibo. Let's get back to the Caribbean again. Now, I wanted to interrupt this video because look, I'm an absolute doofus. You might have seen my previous video I did, which was my CanCon board game haul. Well, great video, love it. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. But I can't believe I left two games off my board game haul and they're two of the bigger name games as well. Earth, I guess it's got vibes of terraforming Mars. You know, it's gonna be a lot of card management, but Earth, look, I'm so excited about that. A lot of people are loving that. And of course, I picked that up dirt cheap. So there's one of them. And the other one, far sure. I love me some Everdell. How did I forget to put Farshaw in that video? I just feel ridiculous. Anyway, Everdell World is my greatest world. I love it so much. So when Farshaw was announced, I was pretty pumped. The only thing I'm a bit sad about, no Andrew Bosley artwork, but look, whoever the artist is, did an exceptional job there, and I can't wait to check out Farshaw and Earth. Anyway, let's get back to what this video is actually about, and that's the most anticipated games of 2024. Anyway, that's it, bye. And lastly, look, I couldn't have a most anticipated game for 2024 and not at least talk about Wormspan. Now, Wingspan is my number two board game of all time. I've got every expansion. It's probably one of my most played games in this house. I've even made a shrine up there to Wingspan. That's how much I love it. So when Wormspan was announced, I felt disappointed, disillusioned, I don't know, it just didn't feel right. So straight away, I dismissed it. The idea of dragons doesn't interest me. I love birds, birds are cool. Dragons, I guess they're also cool. But it wasn't until I actually sat down and realized, you know what, it's a fairly different game. While it has the DNA of Wingspan there, it's, it's quite different. You've got to set out your caves and then from there you can going to entice your dragons into those caves and there just seems to be a lot more going on and a lot different. So I think it's going to stand on its own as a, another alternative to Wingspan. So maybe Wormspan is something that you might be really interested in and it's coming out this year and it's going gonna, it's gonna to do great. Again, Stonemaier Games, they just kick it out of the park. So there you go, Wormspan. So what is your most anticipated game for 2024? Now, this video is more about the family, the beginner, the intermediate games. I'm gonna do another video with my most, I guess, anticipated strategic games that I'm really looking forward to soon as well. So let me know what game are you most looking forward to? 2024, it's gonna be a massive year of gaming. I can't wait. Let's just get to the table and let's just have some fun.